Well, hi, everyone. I am Steve Severs. Welcome to Bionic Buzz. I'm here with my colleague, Jackie Lewis. Don, we're here to talk today about your project, Viral Vignettes. So you actually starred in a few and you directed, I think, at least one. I'm not sure if you directed more than one. So tell us a little bit about your character in Viral Vignettes and how was it to also direct? Oh, well, um, you know, the, the Viral Vignette series, they've done now 11 episodes, I believe. And I was in one of the early, early ones. Um, my character, uh, he's a guy that's a little bit uh, neurotic. Um, you know, he's in the first episode, I'm talking to my cousin, played by Robert Wool, who, um, you know, we hadn't seen each other in a while and we, and we haven't been able to see each other because of COVID. So, so we're talking to each other over Skype and that's sort of the concept of viral vignettes. It's all these scripted pieces, uh, very funny, sometimes has a little bit more going on than just the humor. Um, and, and they're like five to 10 minutes each. And it's, it's, it's characters, it's scripted, and it's capturing what, what we're all going through and what we have been going through. Um, and, and with a lot of humor and, and some heart. Uh, wonderful writing, uh, Fred Stropel uh, wrote a lot of them. Um, and I had worked with on a piece of Fred's before with the same producer, David Levin. Um, something I did with Anson some years ago. So it was really nice getting back and, and working with that same team. Uh, Bill Bickley wrote, who was one of the main writer producers of Happy Days in the early years, he wrote uh, an episode, which was the second one I did. So it, it was just a blast. And as I was saying, my character, he's, you know, he's a guy that's um, a little neurotic. And we see him first with Robert Wool, his cousin, um, and 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 I, I don't want to give away too much, but it deals with his paranoia over the COVID situation. And then the second episode that I acted in was with uh, Gail O'Grady, and um, and I'm playing the same character, but I'm talking to her because she's my therapist, and um, uh. so it's my my sort of ten minute session with her, as I'm sort of maybe inappropriately starting to fall for my therapist. <laughs> so that's, that, that's the uh, second episode that I did. And I directed that one. And then on a th another episode I was not in, I directed Linda Pearl and Lydia Cornell in, um, in an episode called Care Package. And that was a blast to direct the two of them. I'd, I'd known both of them over the years and, um, and it was just a, a hoot getting to sort of direct them. It didn't take a lot of directing. I was just guiding them a little because they were so good. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it, I, people, I think, are really going to enjoy these these episodes because, you know, they're certainly relatable to what's going on now and they're done with such humor and, and you know, in, in nice little pieces. It, as, a, as the title vignette suggests, you know, it's five, ten minutes. And, and in today's world where everybody's so scattered, they can fit the five, 10 minutes in and very nicely and have a great time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, everyone's so ADHD online. So I think 10 minutes is good. Uh, yeah. I, I'm really curious, cause this is, uh, I mean, uh, we'll get into the upcoming uh, fundraiser on May 8th, but I'd like to know how this all got started. Like, I feel like, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, everything shut down. So this is kind of a brilliant way to direct, act and edit all from our comfort of our home. So when did this right. first start exactly? Oh. Yeah, well, the producer, David Levin, who I mentioned I'd worked with some, you know, some years ago when he came to Anson Williams and I with a, uh, an idea for a series, an anthology series. And, um, and then I loved the concept and the scripts that he showed us that we could choose from. So uh, we, we had a great experience doing that. And um, so then when he called me, you know, this was back kind of early into the COVID situation a few months in. And he was saying exactly what you were just alluding to, that yeah. we want to stay creative. We want to stay productive. How can we do this with all the limitations and restrictions we're facing? And he came up with the idea with, I think, with Fred Stropel, the writer that he'd worked with in the past that I'd worked with. And they, he said to me, what if we did, you know, a series of short 
vignettes scripted again and and um, where it's characters dealing with what we're all going through this way we it, it's organic to the idea that we could shoot it from the comfort of our own and the safety of our own homes because the characters are going through the same thing and they have to talk to each other in that fashion so it, it all ties in and it's supported by by the the premise is supported by the reality of what's going on and you accept it and um and we don't have to have camera crews and we don't have to go to locations and exteriors and all that it's just yeah. two people talking to each other but it's not me don most talking to robert wool it's it, again they're all scripted and really well yeah. done so, and the, so the cool thing is they're they're edited really nice so it's not just two people on the screen but it's a lot of back and forth it's it's really done really well so yes you know D david did a great job of coming up with a way to to to, to us you know he could control the, the the shooting of of each camera and you know isolate it and and then as a and as a director there were, that was the other thing i was looking to do to bring some movement to it so it's not just heads. So maybe my character, when he's nervous that his wife is going to be hearing what he's doing. So he's doing, you know, this and you see this on camera. And then and then I come back into it and, you know, and trying to create. And then I move over there for something else. And and when I was directing Lydia and Linda, she was in the Linda's in the kitchen and she's preparing. So she's moving all around and then coming into the camera. So it, it it broke it up and made it made it um, you know there was some kinetic energy there that was fun. Very cool. Well, like like I mentioned, you guys are doing a Q and A with the cast, another fundraiser for the Actors Fund this Saturday. Uh, yeah. How will be getting together with the cast? You know, I gotta assume it'd be all over Zoom. I guess. Yeah. Um, what what David has put together is like a marathon of all 11 episodes and it's not going to be too long because as i mentioned they're pretty short so it's a be a really nice uh, collection of these episodes all at once and and for each episode the actors that were part of that episode are having a little q and a you know sort of talking to the to the uh, people who whoever is going to be viewing and and watching this you know we do jim meskman hosts it jim Jim is also in one of the episodes. It was a, he's a wonderful actor, impressionist, comedian, very funny. And so he hosts it and interviews all the actors for each episode. And then you get to see the episode, that sort of thing. Oh, that's wonderful. And Don, obviously a big part of this is the fundraising for the Actors Fund. So can you tell us what your thoughts are about the Actors Fund? How, how you know, your thoughts on them? Well, yeah, I mean, I feel very fortunate, you know, I've been able to have a career that, you know, that lasted a while, it's hopefully gonna last for a while longer. And, you know, where I've been, been able to make a living out of it and do very well, but it's a very tough profession and um, sometimes not fair. And, you know, two and two doesn't always equal four in, in this business. So you have a lot of talented people who, so, you know, some are struggling, um, you know, and, and it's a more difficult and, and, and also for people that certain things that might have happened in their, you know, health reasons that it's hard for them to work. So, so it's a wonderful way of, of, of giving back and, and helping all of those fellow actors that uh, are in need. Very cool. I, um, I like to get into your music career. I mean, because you also have your own, uh, I guess, uh, swinging big band that you perform at with yeah. 54 Below in the Cutting Room in New York City and other places in Hollywood. Um, talk about your passion for that and how that got started out. Well, it's it started. It was really bef I was I was doing that before I was acting in in oh, wow. act, in, in, in reality. I, my first big, you know love was was music and and especially the i was 15 years old and i was singing in a nightclub act in the catskill mountains upstate new york one summer i mean that's how far back it goes and that's what i was pursuing i loved the great you know american songbook this uh, especially with a jazz band so the jazz standards is where i where, where it's in my that's really in my blood and mm -hmm. and my wheelhouse although i've been expanding 
out a little further. So uh, what happened was after that summer when I performed in the Catskills, I shifted my focus to acting. Um, long story, which I won't go into, but I decided to put the music aside for a little bit and really and get into a serious acting class and, and focus on that. And that's what I did. And then I got really it, caught up in that and sucked into it and, and was able to get an agent, a manager and, and some agents in New York City. And I started getting, you know, a lot of TV commercials, especially at the beginning, some big national commercials. And I was really uh, like laser focused on acting. Mm -hmm. And then I knew at one point I'd want to bring it back. And it, and it came into play for me over the years when I would do musical theater uh, that required the singing. And every once mm -hmm. in a while I would get to sing in, you know, maybe a telethon or charity event, but I wasn't really pursuing it because that kind of music was not looked upon as commercial in the 70s and 80s. It was looked upon as my parents or grandparents music, you know, but but the Great American Songbook has come back strong and, and, and chic again, starting in the mid 80s with, you know, Harry Connick and, and Tony Bennett helping to bring it back and Diana Krall and Michael Bublé more recently and all kinds mm -hmm. of Natalie Cole back in the day. So so I knew it was the time if I ever was going to do the music again about six years ago, I said, I'm not getting any younger. I better I better start do 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 something. And I put together an act and found a musical director and and we got some great musicians and we tried it out at a club that Jackie knows. She came to see me at uh, Vitello's yeah, in amazing, studio. Amazing show. Oh. Yes. Wow. Oh, thank yeah. you. So so that was she was there for at the very beginning when I was bringing this back into my to my programs about six seven years ago, and I did a CD called Be Most Mostly Swinging, which has, a, it's all that great big band and all those uh, great songs from the, from the Great American Songbook. But more recently, um, I started doing a, a CD with a producer out of Nashville, a guy named Tony Mantor. And, and he said, let's do something. I don't want to do the big band thing again. Let's do, we could still do some jazz standards, but in a more contemporary jazz setting. Oh, and, that's awesome. and, and, and I really like the idea of doing that. And then also integrating some songs, since I also loved the music growing up in the 60s and 70s, what I, you think of as classic rock now and R&B and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So we, we picked a few songs from that genre as well. Um, a song called Ooh Baby Baby that Smokey Robinson had a huge hit with in 65. And it's mm -hmm. been released as a single in the UK right now. And... Um, and a few other songs from the 60s and 70s mixed in with some jazz standards, but but the the, the arrangements all kind all kind of tie it together so they fit. So I'm excited about because we will be releasing it here in the US, but we couldn't finish it because of COVID. We're about three quarters of the way done. And I'm looking now, it looks like in mid-June, I'm gonna go back to Nashville and finish that CD. And it's coming along great. I'm excited uh -huh. about that. I love Nashville. I was just there a couple of weeks ago. What a crazy oh, city. Yeah. <laughs> I love all yeah. the live music everywhere. It's fantastic. So yeah, it's certainly a Mecca, a Mecca for great musicians. That's for sure. Absolutely. And, um, and I just got back from Prague where I was doing, a, I'm doing a, I did a movie. They're still shooting um, oh, cool. where I play a King and we shot in this amazing castle and in, in about three hours from Prague. So um, I just posted about that. Some some cool pictures in the castle. I'm really excited. And and I and I did a lifetime movie um, about a month ago. Uh, one of their holiday Christmas movies. It's called Holiday in Santa Fe, and um, and with Mario Lopez and he's exec producing, and some wonderful actors, uh, Amy Garcia, um, and and a few others that um, you know I don't want to leave people out. But t it'll be on obviously during the holiday season so um so i've been busy with a couple other projects which is really cool that's awesome oh yeah that's wonderful yeah and your show is terrific and i can hardly wait for that new cd don and hopefully covid free in a while we'll go see you play as well again yeah i'm, I'm dying to get back up there on on stage and 
and perform again. I, I do have something lined up at a jazz festival here in California um, in Fullerton on June 17th. I'm going to be doing the, the closing night of their jazz festival. It's called the Muck Jazz Festival because it's at the Muck and Thaller Cultural Arts Center in Fullerton. So I'm really excited about getting back into that and hopefully there'll be plenty of, uh, you know, a lot of bookings in the near future and maybe, and certainly back uh, here, whether it be Vitello's or Catalina's mm -hmm. Jazz Club, which is a great venue here in LA and um, Vibrato's I love too, which is uh, Herb Albert's club. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping to get back and do all that. Wow. Uh, but um, I'm really looking forward to, to uh, the viral vignettes marathon you know, on, on the eighth, and um, and because there's some episodes I've seen a bunch of them, but I haven't seen all of them, so I'm looking forward to to seeing them um, all together. I think it'll be a great evening. Yeah, and I think I think so too. And I've seen most of them as well, not all of them, and they're just terrific. And I yeah. I love the one with you and the therapist. That's like a great one. Can't get oh, rid thanks. of it. Very yeah. amazing. So um, thank you so much. And Don, let us know where we can find you on social media. And, uh, and do you list all these tour dates and stuff on your social media as well? Yes, I, I usually do um, post about any of my upcoming shows and or films that are coming out of TV. Um, so on Facebook, it's under Don Most. I also have a music page under Don Most. So it's a personal page and a music page under that name. And on uh, Twitter, it's it's at um, <laughs> most underscore Don at most underscore Don, and then um, Instagram it's Don Most One. Oh, great! Well, thank you so much, and we are so looking forward to May eighth. Uh, yeah. Viral yeah. vignettes, and uh, it's going to be amazing with all that cast. It's such an amazing cast. I can't hardly wait to see how you all interact. Renee Taylor, Jim Meskimen hosting, David, the, the producer. Oh, it's going to be really, really fun. Yeah, there's a lot of act terrific actors that people instantly recognize. And and then hearing everybody talk about the their experience doing it and the episode itself leading up to, the, to seeing the episode, I think will be a nice treat for for the audience. I think they'll enjoy it. Very cool. Well, Don, you're so talented. Keep up the amazing work and we'll keep in touch. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for thank having you, me. Don.